tonight I'm sampling Nun Shall Pass Oatmeal Stout from Devil May Care Brewing in Winnipeg. They describe it as uh, big notes of dark chocolate, coffee figs, dates, and uh, and just generally oatmeal stout. And there's all kinds of uh, Monty Python references on the side of the can, which uh, I guess you can screenshot and uh, read at your leisure. I'm not going to bother, but it's pretty funny and pretty fun. So the last few days I've been tinkering with this little thing. Now this is nothing special from a hardware point of view. It's just a D1 Mini and a ring of uh, WS2812 uh, LEDs, aka NeoPixels, but that's a brand name and these are cheap knockoffs. I'm playing with these to experiment with a uh, an Arduino library that I discovered recently. Specifically a library written by this guy, Stephen Ludgate. Uh, it is the Octoprint API library, which he uh, put together with a bit of help from uh, Brian Locke to allow you to monitor your Octoprint uh, remotely. And yeah, you can monitor it on a web browser or something like that. But this is more of a little uh, dashboard thing that you can just glance at casually so you don't have the web browser open all the time. So I'm, I'm not going to uh, go through how to install it and everything else and how to set it up too much. That's all well detailed right there on the page, which of course I'm going to link to. But like any good Arduino library, you can install it easily just from the library manager. It's right there. Uh, no trouble to install, no challenge at all. It just works as it should. And it comes with a few examples, again, as most libraries do. There's some for the ESP32, um, just a basic hello world, and uh, you can it demonstrates how it works. And then there's a hello world for the ESP826 and a couple of uh, others. This get print jobs and uh, WS2812B, which is the one that I've really been messing with. But just for fun, uh, just to introduce this a little bit, let's look at the Hello World serial. So here's how this uh, serial demo works uh, just right out of the box. You throw in your SSID and your password, um, the IP address of your Octoprint server, which in my case is on a Raspberry Pi, so it's OctoPi. And then probably the hardest part is the API key, which you just get out of your Octoprint server, which you can find in there. Anyway, you just copy that from there into here, and that's all the changes you need to make for just a baseline demonstration. And then it will just uh, print out some stuff to the serial, print, serial port uh, showing the status of your printer. And there we go. It's connected. Uh, it's got itself an address. My printer is currently operational. It is not printing. It is sitting ready. And there's the temperatures of the, the bed and the nozzle at the moment. Room temperature because it's not actually doing anything. But that's not the main event. I mean, you could use that as the basis of writing your own code to do whatever you want, I suppose. But that's not what I'm doing. The one that I've been playing with is the uh, WS2812B progress sketch that comes with it. So this one, you connect your uh, WS2812, your NeoPixels, if you will, to pin 4. Uh, you tell it how many LEDs you're using. Um, in his example, he's got 110. I'm using, what, a dozen, I think. Uh, the brightness, and then you can, it sets up uh, a few of the different colors. Goes online. Yada yada, same as before. And then in the main loop, basically, it just grabs the percentage completed from the printer, divides it by the number of LEDs, and shows the percentage completion on the LEDs. Fairly straightforward, even though the code looks a little bit intimidating. It's not, that's basically what it's doing, it's just uh, showing a, a progress bar, essentially, that you can have sitting on a shelf or out of the way or whatever you want. So that's the code that I've got on that board is the one I've modified it to have just 12 LEDs. And when you plug it in, first it just goes through a couple of colors as it's booting up. And then this is while it's connecting to the Wi-Fi, so it doesn't always get all the way around. And that's why it just clicked off there um, because that's how long it took to connect to the Wi-Fi. So now this is just showing that the printer is sitting in an idle state. Once it starts printing, it will slowly work its way around in a circle and it will be 100% filled when your print is 100% done. 
and as cool as that is, um, this isn't entirely, uh, how shall we say, um, family friendly or uh, decorating friendly. So I'm going to try and clean it up a little bit more um, and make it a little bit more robust. And just for fun, I've started a print, so we should see this thing slowly ticking around as time goes on in this video. And hopefully I don't take more time than the print takes. So to clean it up, I've uh, spent some time figuring out uh, a bit more in CAD and practicing. And I've made up this little box here, which the ring actually fits quite nicely into. And I've got a hole for the wires to go through. And then I've got a hole on the side, which I intended to be a place to, for this to go and a USB to plug in through there. But unfortunately, but unfortunately my CAD skills are still uh, in the needs improvement stage. So I didn't measure that well and I can't quite get that to plug in. So I'm going to have to come up with a plan B. Plus, I messed up there too. So my plan B is just going to be to blob that guy on there with a bit of hot glue and hope that I don't break the D1. I'm not sure which way up I'll put it. I'll probably put it that way up with the glue just underneath the antenna end. And then I'll, because that won't fit through there, I'll just run a wire in and I'll probably just solder down to the power and ground actually. Or on second thought, I do have these uh, plugs. So I might do that just so that I'm not soldering to the board and that still frees up the five volts ground and to uh, to wire out to this guy. Yeah, I think that makes more sense. And I'll just cut this power only USB off this oddball little splitter that came with something or other. I don't know, I had two males and one female and the one male is power only. So right now the print is still at 0%. And the, the first LED will basically be one twelfth when one twelfth is, uh, is completed that second one I'll light up. So let's keep an eye on that in the background as things progress here. I don't know the pinout of these, uh, micro USBs. Hmm. There's ground. Which is that one. There's actually five pins on these things, but ground is that first one over there. And five volts, where is it? Is on the bottom. What? Is there a, oh, there's a protection diode, isn't there? Of course there is. Or I could just put the meter into diode check and uh, read across the diode. So there it is. Five volts is there and ground is over there. Okay. And just to add to the illusion of professionalism, I put a bit of heat shrink on there just for some insulation, just in case. Seems reasonable enough. Next, I dig around in my uh, box of various lengths of wire and I found this three wire cable, which is sold on eBay and various other places as servo cable for hobby servos. So I think that will work just about fine for this. I'll desolder these pins that I had on there and replace it with this. Data. Not my best work, not my worst. I'll live with it. And those should be able to drop down through there and if I did this right it just sits in there nice okay while I'm waiting for the hot goo gun to warm up I'm just solder these guys in I guess so where's my voltages here five volts ground and d4 are the three pins that are involved which are conveniently side by side here I've intentionally left these long so I can trim them later. But that's not a big deal. OK, 
and always clean your tip. That'll do. That completes the soldering portion of this project. So now it's arts and crafts time. Just blob some hot glue in there. A generous portion. I'm just gonna squidge that down. Be careful not to get my fingers on any that pokes up through the holes. Yeah, now I'll just hold this till it uh, cools. And while I'm holding that, you may notice over there that we've made some progress on our print. Uh, according to Octoprint, there was about 27 or 28% completed so far. Okay. So I'm probably going to finish this before that's finished, but that's okay. That's what editing's for. Okay, now that that's done, and cooled, I just have to fit this into the box. Which way up does that go? That goes that way. Okay, and as I said, it doesn't have to be pretty in there because I'm going to put a cover on there. Oh yeah, a cover. That's what's printing over there. Oh, we got another progress bar. Cool. So yeah, I think I will just put some glue underneath this end here where there's nothing on this side of the board. And actually, I'll just put it onto that side of the board, roughly and uglyly, and just glue it down. And again, sitting here waiting for glue to harden. Probably should put a little bit of strain relief on that as well. Some people are going to be screaming in the comments, hey, you could have redone that and reprinted it. Yeah, I could have. But this box took about five hours to print. So I don't really feel like wasting the time and the filament on it. Your mileage may vary. Okay, time has passed and the hot glue has hardened. I gobbed a bit more on there when the camera was paused. So let's see how it works. I think these two should both be able to make holes from the API simultaneously. I hope so anyways. So there we go. This one I, uh, I changed one setting in the software for the brightness a little bit. I found under normal viewing conditions, i.e. not my studio lighting, these ones were a little bit painfully bright. Uh, that is 150 out of 255 for brightness. This is, I think, 50, which is still plenty bright except when you're under ridiculously bright lighting like I've got right now. So it looks like we're only two twelfths away from the thing being finished. And if we go over here, that translates to about 87% or about 12 minutes left. So I think I will take this over by the printer and uh, just wait for that to end. And there we go. As soon as it's finished, that should go to 100%. There it is. And here is my print. Let's see if it fits. I think it does. You didn't think I was going to leave the back of that thing completely open, did you? Come on! When you're printing on glass, you're supposed to let it cool down. And it'll pop off easily, but I'm impatient. Okay, now then, how close is that to actually fitting? <laughs> That's pretty damn close to fitting. That's awesome. All right, so there we have it. One little box of magic to uh, monitor the printer from wherever in the house I happen to be or in the backyard or basically anywhere within Wi-Fi range. So there we go. That was fun and a nice simple little project. Thanks to Stephen Ludgate for uh, for coming up with this library. That's really handy. Um, cheers pal. Uh, if anybody wants to try this for themselves or take a look at his code I'll put a link down below. Um, comments and questions as always down in the comments section. Thanks for watching. I'll talk to you later.